Wow. So by the time now people, one, we came to the place where we said in a month's time, on this date, we are not coming back here. This is, this is a very uh, interesting city uh, because it sometimes takes twists and turns that I didn't expect. That conversation that you just had here was amazing. And I say it's amazing because God was speaking to me. Mm. Uh, and you may not even know it. In fact, I can't even continue the CTA until I, I, I do what it is that God has told me to do, mm. which is very difficult for me to do. Uh, but I'm an obedient son of God. Um, as cleaning the airwaves, we'd like to support New Life Home. Mm. So we are going to put in one million shillings oh, wow. into New Life Home. Oh, wow. Uh, God told me this from yesterday, mm. uh, but of course when you hear figures like that, you're like, well, <laughs> imagine, there's no way. So as you've been speaking, uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's, it's been a fire inside mm. of me. Mm. Um, I wanted to tell you off camera, but he told me no. So mm. you, you have to say it on the camera. Um, what you're doing for those children mm. is amazing. Uh, you are bringing such a huge solution and we'll and we'll get to that part mm. of the story mm -hmm. uh i i didn't think that he would push me to do this at this point wow yeah but i feel such a good thank release you that Lord. you did that so <laughs> we cannot go on the story. You. Fact, I feel like <laughs> so cta is is under a company called moapi entertainment mm -hmm. so cleaning the airwaves just to support exactly what you're what you're doing we're mm. going to put one million shillings into that mm, thank you so god bless you and continue to do what thank it is that you're doing much. Sir, hey, I feel lighter now. Now I can, I'm, even, I'm even listening. It's like I couldn't continue. Okay. The story is a chapel. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So let's talk about then how does Nairobi Chapel go into becoming all these churches? Mm -hmm. Is that, are we in this season right now? Mm -hmm. Or yes. is there anything else that's before no, that? No, no, no. So I, I think what we, what I was talking about how we moved from 20 people, and the church continued to grow to a place we had five services. Yeah. And ICC had moved out of Ufungamano. They had mm. moved to their own space. So yes. Chapo took over Ufungamano. So we used oh. to, yes. So we used to run two services, three services, eight, two at ten, one at Chapo, one at Ufungamano, and twelve. Was there Chapo a Swahili Fungamano. service at Ufungamano? No, we never had Swahili services. Okay, okay. We were all, they were all English services. Eh? So if you were preaching, then what happened is you'd preach one month in three services, and the other person would preach two services, then the next month would flip. So mm. that the series now would go to the other services, the two and I the get three. it. Yes. Yeah, so we, we did that for a while and the church was just still growing, growing. Mm. And the space is small. And um, a vision then was came through, why don't we start five congregations, five locations? Wow. Because by this time, the numbers were just crazy. Ah, the traffic was mad. The traffic <laughs> was terrible. Ministering, preaching. By the time you're done three services, you're wilting. <laughs> then you flip next, next month. Because we didn't want people moving from uh, service to service. Mm. Because, oh, so-and-so is preaching here. Let me run here. Because, again, it was logistically yes, a nightmare. Yes. So tell people, stay where you are. Whatever uh, someone's are here, will come there next month. Eh? Mm. So we got to a place and we're talking as pastors and said, you know, why, why don't we trust God to actually multiply? So it was not a church split. It was a multiplication. Okay. okay. And so we mapped out Nairobi. And we said, if we were to map out Nairobi into five areas, where would we plant these churches? Hmm. And so there was to be a church in Eastlands, one towards uh, South B, South C. There was a church um, in the, Mamlaka would remain. Then the main Nairobi chapel would move to Gong Road mm. in a space of land we had bought several years before. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we had, uh, which was the fifth one? I'll, I'll remember as we go along. Uh, Westlands? Yes. Was it? Yes, yes, yes. K3C. Yes. So 
so we had this and it was it was just very very ambitious to give the context yes the church this time has gone from 20 to 100 people to now what does it look over like 2000 plus it's over 2000 people yeah, and that growing space that yes hold. over 200 or something it's crazy <laughs> people are sitting out would have benches would have things the kids are coming yeah. and it was just uh, just a time of amazing growth eh? mm. and so we thought some people are crisscrossing town from Eastlands to come to chapel. Wow. Why not have a congregation there? The people coming from South B, South C coming. Mm. Why don't we have a church there? And let's encourage people when we begin these churches, please, if you were to take a matatu or a bus, only take which church would you get to if you took only one bus? Mm. That determines the church you'd go to. So we started putting all that in plan. Of course, everybody had loved what we were, even in the chaos that it was. But envision people and help them come through just processing change for about a year. You know, that's, please say that because that's yeah. such a powerful thing. Mm. You didn't just make this decision and suddenly next month you're... No, you're, no, no, you're, no, you're, no. Change is hard. People like, people like what works. Mm -hmm. It works for them. Even though it's yes. two matatus, yes. they like this, yes. they form friends. They and they're happy. Their, their kids like it, yes. But we took over a year. And I remember during that time, Bishop was on sabbatical. Bishop Oscar was in sabbatical. So Pastor Emma and I were at the helm. And he said, I don't want people what? to see this as my thing. Now, the reverse happened. People thought, ah, oh, the bishop went and these two rookies now are taking over and flipping things. <laughs> but uh, it's something we had processed <laughs> as pastors, as elders. And uh, he really wanted us to be at the forefront to be able to see. And again, it's part of that, giving big bites, allowing responsibility with the with um, with all the authority mm -hmm. and trusting your younger leaders to step in into a place he could have stepped in then shown he left for a whole year the hottest time yes. of and just said figure out guys how you'll get the congregation to understand this figure out how you will move them and uh, pastor Moridi was at the helm of uh, so we had different responsibilities so meeting with, again, meeting with different stakeholders, small meetings where we're explaining to them, meeting, meetings, meetings, bringing everybody on board. Somewhere in between that year, me always think it's God who just landed this amazing idea. And one time we began discussing, you know, we are moving into five locations and we have five churches. Why don't we do assimilation, like mm -hmm. an incubation of something of the five here? So. Uh -huh. Take service one, give it to the church that will be in Kileleshwa. Wow. Take service two, give it to Mavuno. Take service three, give it to the guys who will be at Gong Road. Service four, to the guys at Mamlaka. Service five, to Mashariki. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. for several months, we start meeting in those services. So tell people, if you know you're going to be in Mashariki, please come to service X. Then we began to form worship teams. So wow, that's where wow, now, like in a kanji, now, uh, even now they made it, even now, everyone, I want to go like in a kanji. Uh. So, <laughs> so we said, if you're going to be in a, in a worship team, please serve in the service you'll be at. Sunday school teachers, we want you to serve in the. So we began to have all those churches under one roof. Five churches under. Yes. Wow. So by the time now people, want, we came to the place, where we said, in a month's time, on this date, we are not coming back here. Everybody will be apart from the people who will be Mamlaka apart now. Apart from Mamlaka will will remain. Okay, so for context, yeah. in case people may be going to those churches yes. and they don't know the history, yes, the five churches that that were birthed from yes. this Nairobi Chapel mm -hmm. were. So Nairobi Chapel, the one at Gong Road. So and, and not became, Gong Road where it because it didn't start. No, we that, didn't. That's a story yes, get yes, to. yes. So Nairobi Chapel at Gong Road, we had the land, which is another amazing story in our history. We had spent, we we had to raise a lot of funds. A step, I think it was about seventy million mm. in those days to buy that piece of land. Mm. And again, God came through. But we, what didn't we do? We had several groups fundraising. We, for the first time, I climbed Mount Kenya because we had to take teams up. We yeah. were fundraising. We had kids do a walk from the church to, um, I think it was somewhere near Thika, hmm. small Sunday school kids. And if you want fundraisers, 
You they get kids. kids. Hey, <laughs> kids, they go to grandparents. They come every. Uh, kids raise a lot of it's money. It's so funny. Yesterday, our yeah. neighbors just came to hey. me. I'm doing the, the matter. No, yes. Some yes. Hey, you kids can't can, say no. They can't say no. And kids who understand <laughs> the value. The baby, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we had kids walking, then the teens. Um, yes, yeah, so kids walked, I think, up to Thika. Hmm. Yes, Sunday school did that. Then the, we had a flag, an Nairobi Chapel flag. So then, after about two weeks, the teens came from Thika uh, to the base of, the, of Mount Kenya. They walked all that way. What? And I was a youth pastor, so I still did that walk. Then there were three teams of women who were to climb up to Lenana, Point Lenana. And there were two teams of men, and then we had two technical teams whose goal was Batyans. Summit. Yes. So my husband was in one of the technical, and Bishop Oscar was in it. So we did that. We raised a lot of money. We always laugh. We say, he, he, Bishop Oscar practiced the least, but somehow summited. We said, God just didn't want to shame his servant. <laughs> So all the women made it to Batian and the men, and then the two technical teams, um, the team where my husband was, they got to Nelion, mm. and there was a, a terrible snow, icy thing, where the guide said, no, you can't even try and cross. If you made a slip, you can't even recover the bodies. Mm. So that team came back feeling very, very deflated. They really wanted to get to Batian. But we tell them, at least you got to Nelion. Mm. Then f now Bishop's team got to Nelion, and I think only two of them made it to uh, Batian speak. And put the? Put the flag, but I don't think he's ever been back to any mountain again. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell him, I remember when we went to meet them at the base, and we're so excited. I remember him saying, we need to go, we need to go. So we're in the car. I actually have this visual of him looking back at the mountain, chewing his nails. Where have I come from? <laughs> and remember, mm. this is not uh, with climate change. Yes. This is the 90s yes. when that, the amount of snow, yeah. the weather there is in... So we did a lot as a church to buy that land. We had another walk from Naivasha to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We did that. People were selling cakes. People, people were doing a lot of things, eh? But then we're not able at that point to move into the land. Mm. So the church, the first church was Nairobi Chapel, moved to, we rented space at Impala. Yes. We pitched the first dome. Yep. It was the first, now there are many domes. Yep, yep. But Chapel was the first to pitch the, those domes. And then the second church was Mamlaka. So they were going to remain at, at the, venue. the original venue. And then the third church was Mavuno. And uh, the fourth church was Mashariki mm. in Buruburu mm. with Pastor Gowi. And then the fifth church was uh, in Kileleshwa. Mm. Mavuno at that time was in the South Sea Sports Club. Yes. Yeah. So during that time, there were five pastors, which for me is an important piece of my history. There were five pastors. So it was expected I would actually plant one of the churches. Yeah. Actually, now we uh, see it. <laughs> yes. But I prayed and prayed and prayed on it, and I felt God saying no. Okay, and uh, it was during, we were very good friends with uh, Pastor Charles Nganga, Bishop Charles Nganga then. He was mm. not even part of the chapel. And I think talking with, uh, with him, praying through some, I felt, I told Bishop, I think we have a good man. Let's bring him into our circles. Let's, let's Charles become part of this team. Mm. So even that internal team initially were like, why aren't you planting? Why can't you plant? So some people think it was because of gender that mm. I was not allowed to be a lead pastor then. But I sincerely had prayed and felt God, felt God saying, I have another assignment for you. So the first year we planted, I stayed in so Mamlaka. So it's you who made the decision yes. not to plant? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I've, I've, I stayed and there was a, later I got to understand. Uh, one, I knew if I'd said yes, again, I'd come, we had come to a place in chapel where there was a very open door even to women. So that was not the reason. And I felt God had said, he wants to give me a support role for a season and I would understand why. Mm. So the first year I worked in Mamlaka with Pastor Charles, as remember he's the one coming from outside. Yeah. I've been here for years yes. and he's the senior pastor. Mm. So we worked together and then the second year, now what Bishop Oscar had done, I guess as a good man of God, he kept telling us, I want the four churches to be strong. Make sure. So a lot of the teams were forming. And he kept feeling, ah, it's okay. I planted this church. Even if I don't have good teams, I will we'll still make it. 
but I want at least the first time planters to have strong teams. Mm. By the time we went to um, Impala, it was very clear within a couple of months he needed help. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a strong preaching team, he didn't have, I don't, but all the other churches were very well. So I guess if I use the analogy of our father, he sorted everybody but himself. Uh, but himself. <laughs> So very easy, quickly we could, we realized he needs help. So after my first year... Because he was used to that. He was used, yes. Yeah. But now it was a different, he was at, right at the main road in Gong Road, so the church was growing faster than what it had done before. Yes. So after my first year, I moved back to Nairobi Chapel, to Gong Road. Mm. At that time, we were at Impala, and uh, now really worked alongside him. And I felt God telling me, I'm bringing you here as a bridge to help this church move from one space to another. And I didn't understand it then. But when we moved to Impala, now to the land that is the Gong Road, mm. then it became very clear for me. And then God said, you know, it's not the number one position that sometimes gives great impact. And he gave me the example of Joseph in the Bible. He says, mm. Joseph never became Pharaoh of Egypt. Mm. But in terms of scope yep. and authority, and what he did for Egypt, it wasn't Pharaoh, mm -hmm. it was Joseph. When Pharaoh asked Joseph. Yes. And, that, and God was saying, it's not about being number one. Sometimes even when I put you in number two, there are things number one may not, and you need to be, and, and I felt God saying, I will keep you accountable on how you support. What? So it was very clear for me, very clear. Let, let me ask this question mm -hmm. because I really like what you've said. Mm -hmm. The perception is everything. Mm -hmm. Perception, people at that time are maybe perceiving it differently. Yes. You, this is your own conversations with God. You know, and, uh, and, it's very, and, and it didn't make sense even to Bishop. It didn't make sense to others at that point. It is you who's coming on. Some people thought I was afraid that mm. I was pulling back because of fear. Some people who didn't understand thought, oh, Chapo is sight stepping women, not allowing them. Wow. But it was a very, and that's why for me I feel it's very important to understand what God is called you to do. Mm. Or, and that has to be your, 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 your true north. Eh? Mm. And, and when you know it, it doesn't matter what else is happening around. Eh? You know and you know. And that's why I told God, me, this is my microscope. When you need me to move, you'll be checking me. Then I move out, I go to the telescope and see. So for a long time, a lot of my friends, even in after college, would think I'm very lacking in ambition. Mm. How are you in the same organization for all these years? Mm. But I knew and I knew what God had called me. And so we moved to Gong Road and I could now understand very clearly what my role was as a bridge. Eh? Mm. Helping this church move from Impala, helping this church move to, to Gong Road. And then beginning to help to set a lot of things in place. Mm. Um, so what, does, you, what does your role look like at that time? Uh, because it's not just from the outside mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. You know, as somebody who's worked in church, church is just like any other organization. Mm -hmm. It's got employees, it's mm -hmm. got customers in quotes, yes. people who need to come to mm -hmm. church. It needs marketing, it needs, mm -hmm. it needs, it needs logistics. It ne What's your role at mm -hmm. that time? Mm -hmm. So at that role, at that time, uh, Bishop Oscar was a senior pastor. Yes. So then I was number two. 